Would you trust a heavy metal star to fly your plane? From candymen and beekeepers to professional watchmakers, these celebrities have turned their hobbies into something more. Yes, we're aware it's a bit of a stretch to say that celeb Steven Seagal has quietly been working a regular job as a cop. Since the 2009 reality show Steven Seagal Lawman was based on his unbelievable part-time gig. But Seagal claimed that he'd been doing police work with the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office for quite a few years, so we're counting on it. Regardless, the show came to a controversial end when Seagal allegedly resigned from the force. Seagal resurfaced on the law enforcement scene and with a revived version of the reality show a few years later. This time, he was in Arizona as a member of controversial Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio's so-called posse. The group conducted an allegedly dubious raid on a suspected rooster fighting ring, which resulted in one arrest and the seizure of 100 chickens in 2011. So, even if Seagal had been doing great things as a police officer for decades, some might argue that he almost immediately negated this with his reality TV antics. Chris Colfer went from being fashionista Kurt Hummel in the musical dramedy series Glee to writing fictional tales for children that has made him into a best-selling author. Colfer switched up his careers when he became an author and published his The Land of Stories six-book series, which follows twins Alex and Connor on magical fairy tale adventures. Colfer's series instantly became a number one New York Times bestseller. Talking about the inspiration behind his beloved series, Colfer shared at a 2018 book expo, I loved fairy tales when I was a kid. I asked my mom a million questions about the stories we read together, and finally one day she said, just write your own fairy tale. In 2017, Variety reported that Colfer would be directing and writing the script for a film adaptation for the first book. He explained, Hollywood makes some great stuff, but sometimes they get things wrong. And one thing that they do that I personally think is wrong is taking something unique and trying to make it like everything else. Let's hope Hollywood gets it right. Paul Rudd doesn't quite need to work a second gig as he's already one of Hollywood's top actors. He did, however, become co-owner of a candy store in upstate New York, when he, along with best pals and actors Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Hilary Burton, saved it from closing. We didn't want the store to be anything else than what it was, and so we decided to step in and buy the candy store, and that was like two and a half years ago now. Now proud owners of Samuel's Sweet Shop, the stars have something to look forward to when they need to satisfy their sweet tooth. Not only are they longtime fans of the shop's unique offerings of candy and coffee, but the celebs are also residents of the Rhinebeck, New York area. Rudd told the Poughkeepsie Journal that, One of the most important things any human can experience is to be part of a community and feel connected to where you live and to other people who live there, especially in a job like mine. Although Rudd keeps busy with his many films, fans can sometimes spot him at the counter. He added, So to have this place, to come in and just serve coffee for a while and hang out at the store and hand out candies, to feel a part of the community makes us sane. John Travolta isn't the only megastar taking off to the skies and flying his own planes. Iron Maiden's lead singer Bruce Dickinson has been flying planes since the 1990s and has even sat in the pilot seat in the band's own jumbo jet, taking them across the world during their tours. According to Business Jet Traveler, Dickinson had big dreams about becoming a pilot. He explained, I was always interested in aviation. We were in Jersey writing an album and Nico McBrain, our drummer, decided to learn to fly. Then I was on a family holiday in Florida, so I tried a lesson. My life changed. Every little boy has a fantasy. My heroes were U-boat captains, test pilots, astronauts, and fighter pilots. According to a January 2022 interview with AP News, Dickinson will no longer be piloting the band's plane for their remaining tours since he'll be nearing a pilot's retiring age of 65. However, there is no set age limit for flying private planes. You would never think to add this to a Red Hot Chili Peppers bassist's resume, but believe it or not, this rocker is totally into bees. According to TMZ, Flea, whose real name is Michael Bowsery, has been taking care of bees since 2015, and at the time, had three beehives with over 60,000 bees in each hive. Flea's love for bees also comes with the hope of helping the serious decline of bee populations across the world. 
According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the decline in bees would wipe out many of the foods we love to eat. About two-thirds of the crop plants that feed the world rely on pollination by insects or other animals to produce healthy fruits and seeds for human consumption. That means that crops like apples, blueberries, tomatoes, nuts, and even coffee would be heavily affected if bee colonies continue to collapse. Flea isn't the only celeb that's helping the environment by rocking a beekeeper suit, either. According to local Hive Honey, stars like Leonardo DiCaprio, Martha Stewart, and Scarlett Johansson are avid beekeepers. Some people don't like to believe that Hollywood's biggest stars also have brains. For example, there's rock band Queen's lead guitarist Brian May, who some might not know is also an astrophysicist. According to Queen's website, May holds a PhD in astrophysics, which he obtained in 2007 after years of putting his studies aside to rock out with the late Freddie Mercury. Deciding to go back to school to finish what he started back in the 70s, he shared on The Kevin O'Sullivan Show in 2020, in a way, it was unfinished business. I always had a passion for astronomy right alongside the passion for music. There was always that kind of yearning feeling. Wouldn't it be nice? May got to work with NASA's space missions to reveal the farthest object ever seen from Earth. It's NASA, ladies and gentlemen, taking us out into the very edges of the solar system. He shared the discovery on Instagram in 2019, writing in part, Ulta Mothul is by far the oldest known and most unspoiled relic of the early solar system. That same solar system that was born so that you and I could be born. Steve Buscemi might be known to fans as a TV and film star, but his first job before making it in Hollywood was working as a New York City firefighter. Although he isn't fighting fires or saving lives today, he did put his uniform back on after the terror attacks on 9-11. After the attacks, he traveled to New York and worked alongside hundreds of New York City firefighters as they searched for survivors. Buscemi said at the time, It was a privilege to be able to do it. It was great to connect with the firehouse I used to work with and with some of the guys I worked alongside. And it was enormously helpful for me because while I was working, I didn't really think about it as much, feel it as much. The Brotherhood of Fire Facebook page commended Buscemi for working 12-hour shifts for many days after the attacks as firefighters were digging and sifting through the rubble of the World Trade Center. Thrash metal and watchmaking don't necessarily go hand in hand. But for former Anthrax guitarist Dan Spitz, they have more in common than you think. The musician left the group in 1995 to pursue his studies in watchmaking. And this master craftsman is considered one of the best in the watchmaking industry. In a 2012 interview with Hodinkee, Spitz shared that leaving his band behind was a long process, with playing guitar and going on tour becoming, quote, mundane and more like a job. He added, At the end of the day, I just needed a break. I have extreme OCD. I do things either full on or full off. And I like to do things that others have not done before. Music and watchmaking are one and the same for Spitz. As he told Hodinkee, it's so similar it's not even funny. Learning to play a heavy metal guitar is a never-ending skill. It is painful to learn. That's what's cool about it. Same for watchmaking. It's an unending skill to learn. Spitz did return to Anthrax in 2005 for a reunion, but his passion for watchmaking appears to outweigh his love for making music. Ali McGraw's rise to fame came when she won the Golden Globe for New Star of the Year for her role in the 1969 film Goodbye Columbus. Things would only go up from there when she starred in the beloved romantic film Love Story, which won her a Golden Globe for Best Actress in 1971. However, after only starring in a few more films and a couple of television series, McGraw left Hollywood for good. I was never around ever in my life that level of being looked at. In 2017, McGraw shared with AARP that acting was never really her thing. She said, I was never trained as an actress. It was frightening for me. Every single solitary breathing second. I had some sort of pop star energy, but I had no qualifications. I was never comfortable. Instead, McGraw found other passions in life and became a devoted yogi. In 1994, she released her yoga video called Ali McGraw Yoga Mind and Body. Ali also spends her time advocating for animal rights, telling AARP, I have to restrain myself from bringing home any more strays. 
Bo Ki An is a familiar face on Grey's Anatomy. Although she hasn't had many lines over the course of the series, she does her job as a scrub nurse at Seattle Grace Hospital very well. And that's probably because she is a real-life nurse, too. According to Metro, Bo Ki An, who also goes by an Americanized name as Kathy C. An, is actually a surgical nurse who, like her character, works directly with doctors to give them assistance during procedures. In fact, the cast of Grey's Anatomy watched On work in real life so that they could get a better understanding of their roles in the show. Ellen Pompeo, who stars as protagonist Meredith Grey, praised her co-star in May 2022. What's extraordinary about Bo Key is not only her commitment to 18 seasons of Grey's Anatomy and counting, but also her first profession that got her the gig on Grey's. Bo Key is responsible for helping the surgeons at St. John's Hospital save the lives of hundreds of people. Bustle also reported that Ahn has since retired from being a nurse, but continues to play one on screen. 